Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's dig into this galvanized steel material. I've got my usual simple setup, just a floor plane, three lights pointing at the object, which this time is a cube, a light pointing at the backdrop and a camera set up. So with that in place, I'll switch over to the shading tab. I will enable viewport shading. I'm using Cycles Render Engine and my graphics processing card to do the thinking. Now, I've not got anything applied to this cube at the moment, just the material output. So currently it's a solid black. I'm going to start out by pressing Shift A and grabbing a Voronoi texture. And I will need a noise texture. Now I'm going to mix those two together. And if you're not sure what I just did then, basically I press Control Shift on my keyboard, right click and drag between the two nodes. And that's a way of uh, mixing the two things together. Now I do need a single value to control both of those. So I'll choose a value node for that and set the value at 25. We can muck around with it later. I want a slightly different output from that single value though for the noise texture. So I'm going to add a math node, set that to multiply, set the second value to four and plug the value into the first slot. That is then get, going to get plugged into the scale of the noise texture. And then we'll take the value directly from the value node and plug that into the scale of the Voronoi texture. Nothing else to change there. Now let me plug this into the surface of the material output to see what we have so far. So basically, something not galvanized steel. Now let's move this over so we've got a bit of room to work. Now to intensify this, I am going to get a gamma node and plop that in there and set the value to two. And you can see how that intensifies the patterning. I'm then going to need three math nodes. So I shall get one, plunk it in there and then press shift D to duplicate it and put it in between these nodes. The first one we are going to set to add, which it already is, and leave the value at 0.5. The second one we will set to divide and set that at 5. And the third one we will set to power and leave that set at 0.5. Now, as you can see, it's done a few random bits, but we're now going to get a glossy BSDF shader and plop that between the math node and the material output. Set it to Beckman and move this input to the roughness slot and increase the color value to just pure white. We're going to duplicate that guy and mix him with the first one with a value of 0.25. Now in the same way that we controlled various things in this um, path, we're going to control things in this path as well. So I need another gamma node and I need a copy of the power node. Power is going to get plugged into the roughness here. Color from the gamma node into the color of this glossy shader and set the gamma value to 0.5. We're going to take uh, the output from divide and 
put that into the base value on this math node here and set the exponent to 1. Now to control this color, what I need to do is convert the output from this mix node into black and white data. So we'll search for an RGB to black and white. Plug the color from the mix shader in and take that value over. So we're coming along nicely. A couple more things to do though. The first is to increase the value on this first mix shader to 0.85. Then on the noise texture, the detail we're going to set at 20 and the roughness to 1. Now, it might look a bit weird right now, it's kind of cell based, but we're going to change that by using a different output from both the noise texture and the Voronoi texture. So we'll use the color here to go into color one and the color from the Voronoi texture as well to go into color two. And now you can see it's got that sort of fractured look or hammered look of a galvanized steel. Now that's pretty much it for this shader. I did, however, want to add one more thing and that's a tiny, tiny little bit of displacement. So I'm going to drop that node in there, plug it into the displacement slot. That sends it crazy a bit. Mid level, I'm gonna to drop to zero. And the height, I'm going to set at 0 0.0002. Now you might think that's not done anything. However, when you zoom in super tight, you might just make out some extra bits. Um, I'm also going to control this using the Voronoi Textures color output into the normal slot. And there you can see we've got just tiny little bits that will add a little bit of extra detail if we're ever wanting to look closely. If you're not, and you're going to be looking from a distance, don't waste the extra processing time using that. Okay, I'm gonna render this out with uh, 512 samples, no denoising, because the noise actually adds a bit to this um, particular material. I do have reflective enabled, and in my color management, I've not got any particular look enabled. Obviously, you can change it for a very different look, but I'm leaving it off for now. So let's send that to render. And there we go, the galvanized steel um, texture. So I hope you've enjoyed that and we'll give the video a thumbs up before you head off today. And of course, hit the subscribe button for future uh, notifications about other videos that I upload. In the meantime though, thanks for watching. Thank you.